Robert Prager, a German immigrant, was lynched at the hands of an angry mob in Collinsville, Illinois, on April 5, 1918. Rabid nationalism, racial hatred, and labor disputes created an atmosphere that would foster injustice and murder. Eleven men stood trial for his murder. Eleven men were acquitted. No man was ever convicted of his murder. Justice was never served. But Robert Prager was sentenced. He was tried in the court of public opinion. A mob found him guilty. He was forced to atone for his imagined crimes at the end of a rope. For the crime of being an outsider, he was hanged on a hackberry tree on the outskirts of town. Today, no marker bears his name. No statue bears his likeness. Condemned to obscurity, Robert Prager was sentenced to be a ghost, an elusive specter that is barely a footnote in Collinsville history. Who was Robert Prager, and how did he come to meet his grisly fate? Robert Paul Prager was born in Dresden, Germany on February 28, 1888. He emigrated to the United States at the age of 19, and his early life in America was a struggle. Prager spent a period of time as a drifter, and he even served time in an Indiana reformatory for theft. By 1917, when the United States had declared war against Germany, Prager had made his way to St. Louis, Missouri, where he lived as a bachelor and had found employment as a baker. Robert Prager showed no ill will towards his adopted nation. He applied for citizenship papers after war was declared, and he attempted to join the U.S. Navy, but was rejected for medical reasons. He even had a St. Louis baker jailed after the baker refused to display the American flag. Robert Prager was doing all that he could to assimilate into his new country and prove his loyalty and patriotism for America. He was trying to assimilate into a new nation that was embroiled in a war of unprecedented size and scope against the land of his ancestors. America during World War I was a nation gripped by fear. Wartime propaganda warned Americans to be vigilant against German spies and saboteurs. Emigrants like Prager were imagined to be in league with the Kaiser, secretly planning to bring war to America's borders. Anti-German sentiment was at a fever pitch. There were times where mobs would force German immigrants to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, kiss the American flag, or sing patriotic songs in order to prove their loyalty to the United States. German Americans suspected of being disloyal were ran out of towns or brutally beaten. Men were tarred and feathered for their alleged disloyalty to America. Patriotic fervor and nationalistic pride fueled angry mobs who sought to rid America of traitors. Gripped by both zealotry and paranoia, many Americans felt that many German Americans, like Prager, could not be trusted. In the midst of this national turmoil, Prager crossed the river into Illinois and rented a room on Vandalia Street in Collinsville, where he had gained employment as a baker. Prager was fired from his job in early 1918. His former employer, Mrs. Lorenzo Bruno, found him to be an apt worker, but felt he possessed a, quote, a certain peculiarity in his makeup, which at times made him quarrelsome with others who did not agree with his ideas or ways of doing things. Eager for a fresh start, Prager chose to become a coal miner and found work at a coal mine in nearby Maryville, Illinois. He sought membership in the United Mine Workers Union, but was denied UMW membership and was barred from the union. According to them, Prager was not welcome because he was unmarried, stubbornly argumentative, given to socialist doctrines, blind in one eye, and looked like a spy to the miners. Angered by his rejection, Prager chose to plead his case and not resign himself to his fate. He was not going down without a fight. Branded a liar and a spy by the Union president, Robert Prager attempted to salvage his reputation. He had handbills printed that denied these allegations and that declared his loyalty to the Union and to America. Prager's attempts to clear his name did not extinguish the embers of hatred, but rather they helped feed a conflagration of mob violence. Prager's handbill angered the miners in Maryville. A group of men gathered to confront Prager. Not only did he enrage the miners with his handbills, but he had allegedly uttered derogatory remarks about the president and had also attempted to convert some of his co-workers to socialism. Amidst the hysteria of war, these would prove to be capital offenses. 
On Thursday, April 4th, 1918, Prager was accosted by a group of miners and was forced to kiss an American flag. He was able to escape the mob and made his way to his home in Collinsville to hide out, but Prager's safety would be short-lived. Rumors of Prager's apparent disloyalty and his efforts to fight these accusations spread through the town of Collinsville like wildfire. On the evening of April 4, 1918, a group of miners gathered in a saloon to discuss Prager's traitorous behaviors. Robert Prager's patriotism was on trial. The trial was not to be held in a courtroom, but rather it was to be held in a bar room. Slander, hearsay, and innuendo served as evidence, and a jury of his drunken peers found him guilty. His imagined crimes would be prosecuted to the full extent of lawlessness. The group of miners left the saloon and went to find Prager. At around 9 p.m., the mob seized Prager from the home where he was boarding and dragged him into the street. The group ripped some of Prager's clothes off and paraded him throughout the streets of Collinsville barefoot and draped in an American flag. Local police, fearing for Prager's life, took custody of him and put him in jail for his own safety. A crowd swarmed the jail, demanding that Prager be turned over so that they could deal with him. Collinsville Mayor J.H. Siegel pleaded with the crowd to go home and to allow Prager his right to a fair trial. The crowd relented and dispersed. In order to ease tensions, Siegel ordered all the saloons in town to close, but this choice would soon prove to be disastrous as a group of drunken men whipped into a mob frenzy exited the barroom and into the streets of Collinsville. A large crowd was formed outside of the jail at around 10 p.m. Around 10.15, recent veteran Joseph Riegel arrived on the scene and became the spokesman for the group. Mayor Siegel informed the crowd that Prager had moved to East St. Louis and once again pleaded for the crowd to leave. Regal called the mayor's bluff and demanded to search the jail for Prager. The mayor consented to have Regal and another man search the jail, but as soon as the mayor opened the door, the entire mob stormed the jail. Hell-bent on finding their man, the mob searched every nook and cranny of the jail. They were unable to find Prager and were almost ready to abandon their search when suddenly a man named Wesley Beaver cried out that they had found him. Hiding under a pile of tiles in the basement of the jail, Prager was found by the mob and forced into the streets. No effort was made by the police to protect him from the mob that removed him from the jail. Prager was once again forced to march through the streets of Collinsville, but the mob was taking him towards the outskirts of town. The mob stopped at the intersection of Collinsville and Caseyville roads outside of town, where St. John's Cemetery is today. Undeterred by law enforcement or the truth, the mob would extract their revenge on Prager and keep America safe from spies and saboteurs. Questioned by the mob on the outskirts of town, Prager pled for his life yet again. He denied being a spy and also denied charges that he was hoarding powder in order to blow up a mine located in Maryville. Prager's proclamations of innocence fell on the deaf ears of a mob who were whipped into a frenzy. Prager's life was in the hands of those who wanted him dead. The mob required his life as atonement for his crimes against America and the Union. Prager was permitted to write a letter to his parents on the night of his death. He wrote to them in German, saying, Dear parents, I must this fourth day of April 1918 die. Please pray for me, my dear parents. This is the last letter and testament. Your dear son and brother, Robert Paul Prager. Robert Prager was hanged by the mob and died just after midnight on the morning of April 5, 1918. According to Joseph Regal, Prager's final request was, All right, boys, go ahead and kill me, but wrap me in the flag when you bury me. News of Robert Prager's murder spread throughout the nation. Many Americans reacted in horror to the reports of his death, but other Americans applauded the patriotic fervor of the mob's actions. The New York Times and the Chicago Tribune both condemned the lynching. The New York Republic offered a sympathetic view toward Prager's fate, stating, The victims of lynchings are not malefactors of great wealth or high social standing who might escape justice through influence or the skill of counsel, but the poor and friendless, whose chances in the regularly constituted courts are none too favorable. The Washington Post condemned the lynching, but also referred to Prager's murder as a healthful and wholesome awakening in the interior of the country. J. O. Monroe, publisher of the Collinsville Herald, 
summed up what he surmised as public reaction to the lynching in Collinsville. He stated, Outside a few persons who may still harbor Germanic inclinations, the city does not miss Prager. The lessons of his death has had a wholesome effect on the Germanists of Collinsville and the rest of the nation. Eleven men were charged in Prager's murder, and their trial began on May 13, 1918. The trial lasted three weeks. During the closing arguments for Prager's trial, State's Attorney J.P. Struber argued, The man who justifies mob rule is a disloyalist. Any man who says America stands for mob rule is a traitor. However, defense attorney Thomas Williamson countered with a differing perspective. He stated, the war situation had developed a new unwritten law. This unwritten law, in Williamson's reasoning, gave citizens legal protection allowing them to commit murder in order to protect themselves from disloyalists, traitors, and saboteurs. The defendants wore red, white, and blue ribbons during the trial, and a marching band even played the Star-Spangled Banner while closing arguments were presented. The jury deliberated for only 45 minutes. All 11 men were found not guilty. After the verdict was read, a juror shouted, Well, they can't say we are disloyal now. They had gotten away with murder. Among the few to speak out over the verdict was Illinois Governor Frank Loudon, who referred to the acquittal as a lamentable failure of justice. Members of the Odd Fellows 353 Harmony Lodge, in which Prager was a member, brought his body back to St. Louis and buried him in St. Matthew's Cemetery. His request was honored, and he was buried wrapped in the American flag. On a simple marble gravestone, they placed the words, Died April 5, 1918, at Collinsville, Illinois, the victim of a mob. No other monument has been erected in Prager's honor, and his name has fallen into relative obscurity. A handful of articles have been written about the Prager lynching, but in American, Illinois, and Collinsville history, he is but a minor footnote. Collinsville historian Pete Stamen is looking to revisit the Prager affair. He is the author of an upcoming book regarding the Prager lynching, and he longs to see Prager remembered in the town of his murder. By revisiting the wounds of the past, Stamen wishes to use the tragic tale of Prager to unite the community. We seek to revisit the dark case of Robert Prager, but not for the sake of raw provocation. We seek to resurrect his name from the shadows of the past. We long to have his story remembered, and by recalling this sad chapter of history, we hope to ensure that his blood was not shed in vain. By memorializing his death, we strive to prevent other outsiders from meeting his fate. Robert Prager is not a footnote. He is a casualty from America's not-so-distant past that never got to fulfill his American dream. For nearly a century, justice has remained silent. His murder calls us to vigilantly ensure that cries for tolerance and civility do not go unanswered. Today, we must ensure that Robert Prager is not forgotten. His name cannot remain unknown in the town where he perished.